Well, for this month's Making It Count, we're out with Dave Levy. We managed to drag him away from his syndicate fishing, and we're out for a bit of fun fishing. We're at a complex we've never been to before. It's known as Newland Hall. It's uh, near Chelmsford in Essex. You know, it's always nice to turn up at a new venue, see what's happening, and just kind of read it and work it from there, isn't it, right, yeah, really? definitely, yeah. I think we got here this morning, uh, spoke to one of the locals. It turns out there's about three or four lakes here. Um, from easy to quite difficult, so we've done been stupid and come on a difficult one first, <laughs> haven't we? It's a lovely little lake though, isn't it, this one? It's like a little red mere pool, all over hanging willows, floating weed, really weedy, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, I mean, by all accounts, it doesn't get fished that much, um, and I guess, well, you can see why, can't you? You know, the day to get angler turn up at this sort of place, and if they haven't got any experience of fishing weed, then they're going to go, ah, what do I do? <laughs> it is top to bottom. I think it's definitely surface baits or chods. That's the only way I could see you could fish it. Definitely. I mean, what's interesting is, you know, I had a good look around, and in the edge, there's next to no spots. Um, which tells you something straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. there's definitely some, uh, you know, out in the middle you can see some sort of darker weed. They're definitely visiting and I've seen a, carp, a couple of carp just drop into them and swim back out. I don't think we'll get much day action in here for some reason, unless it's off the surface, what do you think? No, I mean, at the moment, like you say, it's quite bright now, isn't it? I think they're well aware we're here. Yeah, they are, <laughs> definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, but as I was saying about the, the, the spots thing in the edge, you know, if, if there's no spots in the edge and straight away it tells you that, you know, obviously they don't feed in the edge much, yeah. but chances are they're doing most of their feeding within the weed. First thing you said when you got here was chods. Uh, yeah, got to stick some chods on. Is that something you do much, you know, just fishing them on top of weed beds like that? Yeah, 100%. Fish the chod, you know, five or six foot. I put a bead five or six foot up, cast out, and don't hold it down like you do on a normal cast. Let it drop in so that the hook bait shoots up against that top bead, you know. You can just drop it in and it'll just lay down gently over the weed. And as we could, we're seeing them do here, they're just cruising over the contours of the weed and it's in their face. Something very different as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, it's different, like it's hard. If you're gonna bait up in that kind of situation as well, I'll crumble the bait up and that gets caught in the weed column and they're sort of, they'll start picking it off of the weed. So that's the plan I think we need to go with. Cool, all right, well, uh, it looks like they've slowed down a bit on the surface, so I think we're gonna to have to have a mooch about and see if we find an opportunity or, or make one. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I think the way it was looking on the other lake, we could have probably struggled on there all day and maybe, you know, for one or two chances if we were lucky. Um, so we've moved on to the lake next door. Looks like there's lots more fish in here, as you can see by the colour of the water. Quite a few shadows about as well. The boys next door have already got some floaters out. Um, Jay's here from Ridge Monkey as well. And it looks like they're already taking them. For the meantime, I thought I'd just plop out a little solid bag when we stood and watched the lake from that swim over there. There was an area where there was two or three sets of bubbles all within sort of a 10 foot square. I've just stood here for a few minutes waiting to see exactly where they were. Just been starting to pop up again, so I'm just gonna flick this across here. As you see, I've got the old six footer on. It's just, um, I don't know, it's just a lot easier than getting, getting the big rods out and because it's always to hand. It's always the first rod that comes out of the bag, so, or off the barra, should I say. And it is only six foot, but there's a little bit of casting weight on there, so not a problem. That fell exactly where I wanted it. Probably about seven, eight foot deep by the feel of the uh, drop there. Yeah, I just dropped it in the edge here, Joe, and um, only took a minute. You could see it was sort of cloudy, couldn't you, when yeah, we came round? Yeah, bubbling up, yeah. Lovely jubbly. Hey. Double trouble. Good work, mate. <laughs> so we've got a few fish going on the top. They're not big, but um, they just disappeared on the other lake. I think they just went into the weed. And that's where they'll probably sit all day till tonight. So we've come over here and straight away, Jay was in, then I'm in. And even before I've lifted that fish out of the net, I thought I can't let them fish feed like that. And I've, I've got the rod back out and we've had a, a fish off the top. So we get him in and we'll have a look at all three. They scrap well in here. Go on, give up now. Is that about 36? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, we'll get them out and have a look, eh? 
Right, there we go. It's a good start to the day. They seem to do the off on the other lakes. We've popped over here, get a bend in the rod, and uh, took me and Jay about five minutes and was playing them at the same time. So, good o. Okay, here's a little tip for you. Something I've been doing for a long time now, and uh, someone showed me a long time ago. When you're floater fishing, whether it be with a hair rigged boilie or I like to use these fake mixers, I paint the hook with tipex. So when the fish is looking up towards your hook bait, it isn't skylined. The hook gets skylined because it's dark. So if you paint it white, then it just basically makes it invisible to the carp's eye. Gives you a better chance of a take. Yeah, so we left the other lake, walked up here, and uh, Joe said to me, look at them. There was about six or seven fish out there. And uh, we fed some floaters out, and the ducks turned up. And I also think the best thing to do is give them a bit of food on another spot. So I always feed the ducks in one direction and then keep the carp going in the other. Doesn't always work, but it gives the carp a chance to look at what you're feeding them. And uh, I've noticed there's a lot of roach in here. And once the roach get active on the, on the like, surface bait, the carp will soon join in and uh, that's what's happened. So hopefully we're going to try and nick a few more. Wow, well, these fish are actually surprisingly cagey over it. <laughs> sort of, um, rather than just sort of pac man in they're just coming up from the depths and uh, nailing, nailing the baits, but there's a few more turning up now, so it's just a case of getting it in the right position, I think. It should be a little bit less spooky because of the, the murkiness of the water, you know, they're not as aware, as aware of lines and floats and, oh, he's getting close. Uh, it looks like a good opportunity here, there's four or five in the area. Always increases their uh, confidence when they've got more fish feeding around them. Oh, here we go. Oh, straight out of his mouth. <sighs> it's always a little bit hit and miss with floater fishing. I think that was just one of those occasions, you know, where the bait's gone in the fish's mouth and I've managed to pull it Oy. straight out. Sometimes they hook themselves, sometimes they don't, you know, and oh, it's just, as I say, it's very hit and miss. <laughs> Okay, I think the last time we spoke to you, you were at Horton and uh, you had about 540s or something. Yeah. And from what I saw, you went on to catch a hell of a lot more. Yeah, I ended up with eight in the end, mate. Up to 50 pound. I had a mirror of um, a grass carp of 51.10 and a mirror of 50 pound two ounces. Nice. So, yeah, it was a good season last year. Awesome. And I believe you jumped across onto uh, the other side now. Yeah, well, what happened? Uh, the new season started and I was a bit. I just felt it was time to move on, you know. So um, I walked over to King's Mead and Halton was mega busy. There was people bucketing buckets to get in swims, like, and it's like 25 acres and there was three people on King's Mead. And I thought, hold on, there's like a mid, a 54 pound mirror in here, you know what I mean? I'm fishing here. So <laughs> that's literally, I made that to choice. So I basically, I set up in a swim to give me a good view of the lake and I thought I'd have a night in here, rela relax a bit, try and take in the atmosphere. About seven o'clock the next morning I got a take and I thought I was expecting to be like an upper 20 or something and after about five minutes it was still 30 yards out and I thought do you know what I think I fluked one here and I, mean, I played it and had a 46 pound mirror wow fish called Mr Pink on my first uh, first fish so I hit the ground running you know yeah. what I mean so I know you've had a few more since any particular sessions that stand out yeah I did go down we had I had down there one day filming with mainline and um I had a brilliant dad, 13 fish in a day. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was crazy, mate. And, um, off ended, the bottom? Yeah, all off the bottom. Yeah, literally, off, off of, mainly off of one rod. And there was an inlet of water coming in and the bream had been in and spawned. So the carp were in eating the bream spawn. And I was literally just putting bait out. Carp, it was like textbook, you know what I mean? Bait on the spot, cast on top of it, putting the rod down, and it was going. It was just brilliant, like, and I had um, a mirror of 34 and three commons over 37 pound. Wow up to 38 and uh, all some stunning fish as well like the mirror was a fully scaled and uh, the commons were all different shapes yeah, that's what I like about King's Mead the short fat fish big long fish you've got like the Sutton crosses and things like that so you're constantly catching different looking fish you don't know what's coming to the net yeah and it's, it makes it more interesting you know what I mean but it is mad because um, someone said to me that there ain't a lot of big commons in here and I literally had all three of the commons back to back <laughs> And um, they were all definitely on the bream spawn. And you quite often, like, people say commons eat more natural food and all that. And then big commons are quite rare in there. And to get three back to back, 
it just goes to show there is some truth in, you know, they were definitely eating broom spawn and I was just chucking a hook bait amongst it. What, what hook bait were you using? Uh, I was using, what was it now? I do believe it was um, a yellow cell that I'd made myself. Were you using freebies as well? or just? Yeah, yeah, I went through nine kilo of bait. Ah. So I'd done nine kilo of um, cell, uh, the new bait, it's called Fusion. So yeah, so I'd done nine kilo of that with these yellow, yellow cells like hook baits. I've done this somewhere in the region of 16 nights for 35 takes. Wow. Yeah, so it's gone down well. Like Not all of them have been on that. I've had a couple on zigs, a couple off the top. You know what I mean? I've, I've just tried to, like I always do, vary my techniques. I'll try and do whatever the fish are doing rather than... It's more enjoyable that way as well, it, isn't it? Yeah, I move around on them and that. But um, yeah, I've had some good sessions. I've had blanks, because I, I seem to have a couple of blanks and then get four in one session. The fish are very tightly grouped. But yeah, it's really enjoyable. I think a lot of these waters have got so much carp in they can't really see too much, unlike the lake next door where the water was gin clear. And um, I probably had about 20 fish swim up the floaters there this morning and hooked one and lost it immediately. On here, they can't, the sight isn't so good because of the murky water. So we're getting a lot more success, but obviously a bit smaller. <laughs> Salmon. Get some in the net. <laughs> there you go. Another little one to get him back. So, Dave, I hear that you're uh, a new venture in life. Yep, I've uh, finally took the uh, plunge, Joe. And, uh, you know, I always said I'd never work in fishing, didn't I? You did. And, uh, yeah, I've finally done it. I've took a job in fishing, um, working for Ridge Monkey. Excellent. And uh, yeah, really uh, excited about it because they're a company, you know, it's like they're going places, they're not afraid to try new things. They've got a lot of products coming out that no one else has done or even thought of doing, or they've just really improved products. So what exactly will be your role there? Uh, I'll be doing a lot of the media stuff, doing a lot of filming, a lot of fishing, hopefully. <laughs> um, helping with the product design. Most of that's done by uh, Jay Carter, like. But um, I'll sort of, I'll be the one testing it out. So w when they come up with an idea, I'll go and see how well it works and uh, hopefully put it through its paces. Sounds good, mate. Sounds like a, an interesting thing to get involved in. And as you say, you know, they're, uh, they're well known for producing, ooh, we just mouthed that little pink pop up then <laughs> <laughs> and then laughed off at the last second. Um, well known for producing really good quality stuff. And it's uh, carp, ang carp tackle made by carp anglers, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. It's not someone who ain't fishing trying to f think of an idea, it's anglers coming up with ideas, which I always think is better because uh, most problems in fishing and design are, are we figure out on the bank, you know what I mean? We say, this isn't working, how can we get round it? Yeah, I really can't wait. Why haven't we caught one yet? <laughs> pair of noddies. <laughs> Well, there we go, I changed over to a little pink pop-up just out of curiosity and within five minutes I'd had three fish mouth the bait and then uh, I hooked this one. So it certainly didn't hurt, them little uh, pink pop-ups. I'll show you them now, let's get him back. Go on, mate. So I just dropped one right in the edge here. They've been bubbling up, it's only a little one. But, uh, nice bit of action. Just a PVA bag on a bit of plastic. Jay's going to jump in here and net it for me. I think I could probably swing it to hand this one, Jay. He's <laughs> having a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you lost that one, Dave. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Well, not even had a chance to uh, show you them pop-ups yet because there's fish feeding out there. Put it straight back out and uh, add another one. So, you know, I'm one of these people that always goes with a little dull down hook bait. I would never put a bright one on, but I just thought I'd try it and, you know, it's, it seems to be making a difference. Bless him. These pink little stinky 
beauties. Um, all I do is obviously the smaller ones and then I just trim the ends off so that it's slightly flat, flatter than it is uh, fatter, if you like. And that way it helps it just sit on the surface. So I've got that tiny little bit of tubing on there which just stops the line from kicking down at this angle and allows it to sit out flatter on the surface. It stops that blocking off the hook point. And then I've tied that KD style, so as opposed to it coming out of the hook uh, along the shank, it's coming off the shank. And again, that just helps the hook sit below it flatter rather than it sort of sitting like that in the water. But certainly after catching a fish and probably two or three times throughout the day, just add a little bit of uh, grease lightening onto it, which allows the line to sit on the surface. So rather than it sitting under the surface near the hook and potentially spooking the fish, it's floating on the surface and uh, it definitely is an edge that everyone should add to their surface fishing. So let's just run that down there. It's worth doing the main line as well. You can just literally just add it to the reel. Um, obviously the last 10 foot or so, if you just put it between your fingers and run it down, and then that will just coat that nicely. So that's ready to go. I will just do the a bit above the float because I haven't done that for the last couple of hours. Cool. Right, there you go, that's all ready to go back out there. Looks like they've slowed up a bit with the, uh, the feeding intensity, but I'm sure there's a chance of another one yet. Right, I've been getting quite a few bites today on the um, little PVA mesh bags, and uh, it's excellent. On these waters where you've got a lot of small fish, this is definitely a killer method. I'll just get you some funnel web. This is the main line response pellet. It's like a mixture of trout pellet, blood worm pellet, and things like that. And I like to keep these bags small, no more than one or two mouthfuls. So just put it to the end of the bag, twist it, gets it nice and tight. Simple over a knot. Pull it down, and that's your bag. Probably better off using scissors and not your teeth like me. Uh, after that, just simply poke a long bait and needle through the bag. And on this, I'm just using a bit of plastic. When the fish picks up all the little bits, I just want the lightest, most balanced hook bait to just waft back into their mouth. And that's a knotless knot of a bit of plastic cone on it, on a combi link, really simple. So I'm just sticking that on there, pulling it through the bag centre. Pull it in, and I like to just tuck the hook in. And you know, because that's tiny pellets just buried in there. And that will mount on the bottom with a little pile of food, a bit of plastic cone sat in the middle. And on these, uh, on these runs waters, it's so effective. Come winter or summer, I'll use that rig. Like record, isn't it? English PB for Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a better fish. That's the biggest yeah. fish of the day. You yes. jammy oh, <laughs> There you go, Jay. That ain't bad, is it? No, biggest, happy days. Biggest one of the day. Yeah, only come for the big ones. You did say that at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> and, you, and you've done it. Yeah. Well done, mate. <laughs> That turned out to be quite an enjoyable bit of sport in the end, didn't it, mate? It did, yeah. And uh, do you know what amazes me about these waters, Joe? You know that they're, they're easy, but you always find something that works better than everything else. Where on a hard lake, you don't experiment as much because you think, oh, I ain't catching them because it's a harder lake. But on here, you know you should be catching them, so you're changing things and you tend to learn things a lot quicker, didn't you? Definitely, yeah. As you say, when you're on these types of venues where it's clear that they're very highly stocked, the fish are hungry, aren't they? Yeah. There's always some method of catching it, whether you've got to go and creep round and find some under a bush or zigs or floaters or whatever it is. I mean, you, this little bay here, you had yeah. a few bites out of there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah that's right. I bet yeah. that often gets overlooked as well, doesn't no, it? Definitely, without a doubt. And it's fun fishing, isn't it? Creeping up on them in the edge and that. And uh, you can use a method and see if it works quick. <laughs> so Definitely. And I think we'll both be back to have a look at the lake next door, won't we? 100%, yeah. There's some lovely old dark fish swimming around in there, but um, just didn't really have the time today, did we, to uh, Put the effort in. That's it. And I reckon if we've done a night, we'd, we'd have it sussed, wouldn't we? Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, I, right. I had a good walk round earlier, and there's spots you can see are getting visited. You just got to wait till it's dark. I think we'll have to make that a, a challenge at some point. This, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This year. Excellent. Okay, Dave. Well, thank you very much, awesome. mate. Uh, yeah. As as always, you know, great fun, and uh, I look forward to seeing some of these new bits from Ridge Monkey. Excellent. <laughs>